Welcome to the Times Aerospace TV wrap-up of all the action from day two here at MIBA in Dubai. My name is Mark Pilling. Now one of the air transport industry's key topics, key themes is of course sustainability and it's right at the top of the agenda here at MIBA as you would expect. But the business aviation industry more than many knows it has an image perception issue perhaps and Kurt Edwards, the director of IBAC, took this head on at the show. Here at MIBA I wanted to set the record straight on aviation, business aviation and carbon emissions. We have had a plan now for years to address it. We are working toward it, whether it's the short-term goal, medium-term goal, long-term goal, we are working across a range of tools to address our carbon emissions. The sustainability panel here at the BizAv Talks focused on the measures that business aviation can take to reduce its emissions. Speaker Tina Brathen of World Connect Energy was clear that the only opportunity today to really start tackling emissions is to do carbon offsetting, along with, of course, strategies looking forward to reducing emissions in the longer term. For business aviation, like all of the aviation industry, sustainable aviation fuel is a key tool to decarbonise. And we're here with Total Energies to find out what their plans are in this area. Well, SAF is very important to Total Energies because it's one of the major ways to decarbonize the aviation industry. I mean, IATA has set a goal to achieve net zero in 2050. We understand the business aviation is going to follow that trend. The simple reason why this goal is achievable is because we found that SAF, which allows to save up to 90% of the CO2 emissions of a given flight, is one of the best answers to achieve this. And the target in 2050 is to use 65% of SAF. So for Total Energy, which is committed to net zero in 2050 together with society, we are willing to become a major player in the biofuel industry and a major player in the SAF industry. We aim to produce 1.5 million tons by 2030, so to become at least up to 10, to, to represent at least sorry, up to 10% of the worldwide market share of SAF. Now we talked about SAF as one of the main tools to decarbonise. New aircraft technology, which is coming, is another major part of the equation. We heard just recently from Airbus, we've been hearing from Embraer about their plans for electric, hybrid and hydrogen fuelled aircraft. And here at the show, we're going to talk to somebody who's developing an all-electric aircraft, and that's Greg Davis from Eviation. Well, going back to just over two months ago, we did our first flight of Alice, the world's first all-electric commuter aircraft. And what we're able to do is bring regional connectivity. So this is a, an, an all-electric experience, zero emissions. Uh, it's going to connect communities uh, in this region and, uh, and do it without harming the environment. So what we're doing here in sustainable aviation, it's about the three C's. It's about carbon, cost, and convenience. By bringing an all-electric aircraft to the marketplace, what we're going to be able to do is completely cut the fuel cost out of operating the aircraft. And then having designed a, a purpose-built all-electric aircraft around the batteries, what you get is a premium cabin size for the type of aircraft. Uh, nine passenger, all-electric commuter aircraft, very, very quiet, very comfortable. Now from the sustainability story, the electric story that we got from aviation, then we move to the advanced air mobility sector, which has resonance in sustainability too. And we're going to get the story from a really interesting Brazilian manufacturer, Tupan. It's a cargo drone. Let's hear all about it. Tupan is a very innovative and disruptive drone. What makes it different from the other drones is that it goes farther and fast, in a fast way. So you can transport cargo in a different way to a long distance and in a very high speed. Manufacturers large and small have sustainability at the heart of their strategies and new aircraft are being readied for greener operations. Dassault's Carlos Branner highlights the arrival of its 6X model and discusses the supply chain challenges all are facing, which we will pick up on tomorrow as well. The first delivery will happen end of June, uh, maybe early July, but end of June, uh, as announced by our chairman of the board. Uh, yeah, the supply chain is an issue, uh, as you mentioned. Uh, everything is tense right now. Uh, it's not particular to the 6X, it's, uh, as you mentioned, uh, all over the board. So what we, what we see today is that uh, this extra demand 
uh, cumulated with a sort of disorganization uh, linked to the uh, pandemic has uh, you know, uh, created uh, this uh, huge uh, issue on the, on the supply chain. So what we do in order you know, to make sure that we get the deliveries done is that sometimes we visit our suppliers to make sure that the components we ordered are there and when they are not there we are requesting plans to make sure that they are addressing our needs. Thank you for watching all of our coverage from day two here at Meba. We've obviously been focusing in on sustainability, that key theme for the industry. Tomorrow will be another busy day. Do tune in to Times Aerospace TV. My name's Mark Pilling. Thank you for watching.